So creative modes are kind of rad, huh? The ability to look at a game's engine, see what it can do, and let you go wild with making your own scenarios, levels, scenery. It's one of the most liberating and fun feelings a game can offer. Many have terraformed their own perfect landscapes in Minecraft and Animal Crossing, made their own levels or even games in Dreams or Little Big Planet, deconstructed and reconstructed 2D Mario in thousands of different ways, and I even have this crummy Warcraft 3 tower defense map I made when I was 13 based on Donkey Kong Country. Oh, look at it! It's awful! However, one of the greatest limitations that can be set on creative projects like these is the sheer amount of possibilities they invoke. Choice paralysis is a very real thing, and something that seemed so infinite can quickly go from a cute novelty to overstaying its welcome. Without learning proper restraint, without a player knowing how to work around an idea or within a set of limitations, that great Mario Maker level might just end up being a bunch of chain chomp springs and big bowsers with wings. Fortunately, these tools often have examples for players to build off of or take inspiration from, or even challenges for a player to fulfill with nothing but their creativity to get them through. And one of the best teachers for learning creativity through adversity is one held near and dear to school children around the world. Roller Coaster Tycoon. Now, at first glance, Roller Coaster Tycoon might seem like another simple sandbox to flex creativity in. You get to build the big roller coaster, watch it go noom, name it the Jackie Chan Adventure because that cartoon was great, and force people to ride it and say it's the coolest ride, because it is. And indeed, there's a lot of freedom for expression and creativity, along with all forms of loop-de-loops and coaster variants to make your dream ride come true. Only... Your patrons might not want to ride it because it's too scary, or because it costs too much, or there's a food stall nearby and they don't want to lose their lunch. The game, perhaps unintuitively based on the age group it was marketed to, decides to focus pretty heavily on the tycoon portion of its title. Victory in one of Roller Coaster Tycoon scenarios isn't determined by how rad of rides you install, but by the overall experience you provide guests and the amount of them coming into the park, as well as having the funds to keep everything going. A shocking amount of restraint is needed for players to succeed at what seems to be a free-range creative game, making the right decisions for where to install food and drink places, avoiding that temptation to make bathrooms cost an arm and a leg because, yeah, that's hilarious and only building the really big stuff when everything's ready and a showpiece to unite everything would be great. And no scenario illustrates this better than the game's fifth, Evergreen Gardens. When entering the lush majesty of the gardens, the player will immediately notice the scenario's most defining feature. Place is friggin' big! After working within the constraints of two relatively small parks, a lake that could only feature one or two main coasters in the center alongside smaller attractions to the side, and an already developed amusement center to expand incrementally, the amount of real estate in Evergreen is incredible. Not only that, but the player has four whole years of in-game time to build, and the maximum loan they can take out is a whopping $40,000. There's a bunch of cool water rides immediately available to play with in the ample water available, an already established and rather complex pathway through, pretty decorations already all set up for themed areas. Yeah. This is the chance to really let loose and build that coaster of your dreams. Something to bring people in and know this is the hip happening place to be. So you build your dream coaster, name it the Blue Eyes White Dragsters, throw in some bumper boats close by so everyone can watch them scream, and sit back as no one goes on it. What do you mean everyone is tired? What do you mean 80% of them are lost? 
What do you mean they want to leave? What do you mean the mechanic still hasn't fixed the ride? What do you mean I'm now a year in and I can't pay back my loan so I can't expand anymore and I have to restart? <gasps> The thing about Evergreen Gardens is that it absolutely sucks as the foundation for an amusement park. The area is beautiful, sure, but all that space and all those pathways are just excuses for guests to get lost, want to make a beeline for the exit, fail to retrace their steps, and sour their mood, as well as your park's reputation. But surely, you can build an information kiosk to provide maps for these guests, right? Sure. After about a year of research, you have to learn to make do in the meantime. And even when you get the kiosk, the park's so massive that you're still gonna run into the problem of dumb guests wandering around aimlessly. Not to mention that every time a ride breaks down, you're gonna have to wait for a mechanic to dash all the way from wherever they are to fix it, or otherwise manually get them to where they need to be and hope that they pathfind well enough that you can actually make money. Even if you front load every attraction, you're still gonna have guests who just ignore the rides because hey, there are these pathways available, decide that, you know what? They hate nature in these boring trees, and will make themselves tired and frustrated wandering about. And on top of all of that, as you're clearing out the hills and trees and other beautifying features of the garden to make room for these thrill rides, it's costing you money every time, eating away at that massive reserve of cash you initially had for no real benefit other than actually being able to play the game. In trying to make a giant park with their massive amount of resources and real estate, the player is punished at every turn and from every angle. So instead, silently, the game challenges players to assess the situation, pace themselves, and create a smaller but stronger foundation. That massive space to work with is more trouble than it's worth. So a player's first order of business should be blocking it off, letting it be used only when they're ready to expand. Focusing on smaller areas and smaller rides, the player can get a steady income base generated before launching into their big dynamic roller coaster. Off neglected benches can be placed, mitigating the exhaustion and frustration that guests can feel. Once an information kiosk is generated, the player can combo their inevitable expansion with a transport ride like a train or chairlift, finally giving them a chance to show off the pixelated beauty of the landscape around them. And in doing this slow expansion, the player is learning how to make the most out of every inch of the park around them maximizing the little sections and individual garden areas that Evergreen offers, rather than having to build around their massive initial ambitions. And when they finally reach a comfortable place, when they're generating enough revenue to make whatever they want, instead of taking out loans at every opportunity to barely scrape by, this once daunting challenge doesn't just become doable, it becomes easy. It becomes the creative sandbox that the player wanted. They just had to work in order to earn it. I will admit, the prospect of Evergreen Gardens is a little cruel. It punches players square in the jaw if they want to make cool roller coasters more than they want to become a tycoon. It leaves the idea of a giant creative sandbox behind in favor of slowly earning the right to develop little portions of that sandbox properly. It's a harsh lesson, but one that's exceptionally important to teach. In making Roller Coaster Tycoon, developer Chris Sawyer specifically avoided including a pure sandbox mode, or any codes to generate extra money, believing that RCT was a game and not a tool. As such, it needed goals, rules, and conditions to keep players growing and invested. And while sequels would later find much success by including customizable scenarios and stress-free creative modes, 
Sawyer did an excellent job in teaching not only the fun and challenge of management, but of the creative process. When tackling any creative project, seeing the big ambitious goal at the end might be incredibly enticing, but ignoring all of the steps and factors to making it work is a surefire way to get diminishing returns on your investment, no matter how hard you work. Evergreen Gardens, and by extent, Rollercoaster Tycoon as a whole, gives players the chance to see that blank canvas, punishes them for skipping the starting steps, and lets them discover for themselves where to start, so that they can get a better idea of where they're going. And I think that's a fantastic lesson for anyone looking to dive into their own creative passions. There's always a desire to indulge in one's grand designs, but as Evergreen Gardens teaches, to reach those heights, you must first design for restraint. Mm -hmm.